Part 2, Title How to Send Petitions to the National Assembly This video explains the procedure for sending petitions to the National Assembly. A petition is a way for citizens to seek redress against rights violations, administrative breaches and infractions by public officers, authorities and corporate organisations. The National Assembly is empowered to receive complaints from the public and it often responds to these complaints through its Committee on Public Petitions in the Senate and House of Representatives. Who can submit a public petition? Any citizen can submit a petition to the National Assembly. These include an individual, groups, communities and even corporate bodies. While a petition can be submitted by an aggrieved person or persons, it may also be submitted through a representative such as a lawyer, a parent or guardian of a minor. Here are important guidelines for preparing a petition to the National Assembly. 1. The petition should be typed or legibly written in English, but if it is written in a language other than English, it must be accompanied by a certified translation, including contact details of the translator. 2. The petition should be addressed to the presiding officer of the chamber in question, that is, the President of the Senate or Speaker of the House of Representatives, as the case may be. Three. The petition must clearly state the complaint and indicate the request or reliefs sought. 4. The petition must have the petitioner's name, signature, date and other contact information. 5. The petition should have the name, address and contact details of the person or agency being petitioned against. 6. The petition must not contain inappropriate or insulting language. 7. While a petition can be written on behalf of a petitioner, it is important that the petitioner attends the hearing session to defend the petition. 8. Every petition to the Senate or House of Representatives must be sponsored and formally presented at the chamber by a legislator. Petitioners who have difficulty accessing a legislator to present their petitions need not worry as the presiding officer of the chamber or the chairman of the committee responsible for public petitions may assist the petitioner in getting a legislator to formally present the petition on the petitioner's behalf. 9. After the petition is presented in the chamber, it is referred to the Committee on Public Petitions for investigation. Note that there is no cost for filing or presenting a petition to the National Assembly. Petitions often follow a procedure outlined in the standing orders or rules of the Senate or House of Representatives, as the case may be, but there is no hard and fast rule nor fixed procedure for hearing petitions by the Committee. The handling of petitions usually follows this format. A. The committee fixes a date for the hearing of the petition. B. The clerk of the committee notifies the parties mentioned in the petition and shares the petition with the respondents, asking them to respond and appear before the committee on a specified day. C. The parties submit and exchange written submissions or briefs detailing their sides to the petition. Usually, the petitioner first files copies of his brief at the committee secretariat and serves it on the respondent. The respondent also does the same. D. The committee may request the petitioner to provide any document or material that will help in investigating the petitioner's case. E. The committee may adopt any procedure that is most convenient and expeditious in the handling of the petition and may even decide to conduct physical inspections or visits to relevant locations where necessary. F. After hearing an investigation, the committee reports its findings and recommendations to the chamber in question. G. The recommendations are then considered and adopted as resolutions at the plenary of the Senate or House of Representatives, as the case may be. Note that the committee does not make laws or pass resolutions by itself. Instead, it makes recommendations to the plenary for adoption as resolutions, which are persuasive and not legally binding. Note also that there are certain petitions that the committees cannot entertain or investigate, such as matters pending before a court of law, matters between two private citizens, Matters over which the National Assembly has no jurisdiction or issues over which it has no budgetary or law-making power. Currently, the rules of the Senate and House of Representatives require a petition to be written and signed by petitioners. While this validates the originality of a petition and promotes direct engagement between legislators and constituents, many countries around the world have adopted the use of an electronic or e-petition system, which improves public participation in the petitions process. This option is not yet available in the National Assembly, but could become a reality if citizens clamor for its adoption. <laughs>